here is the first example. Okay, this is Rappahannock Estuary, a sub estuary of Chesapeake Bay on the Atlantic coast of the US. You see two distributions. The top graph shows you the salinity distribution. Yeah, on the left side is the river, on the right side is the ocean. And this is a slightly stratified positive estuary. Okay, and you learn all about it. Okay. And this is the salinity distribution. You can see a zone where the salinities are between 2 and 10 salinity units. And at the bottom layer, it shows you the total suspended sediment in milligrams per liter. Okay. So where near the bottom, you can see there are elevated values of more than 100 milligrams per liter of suspended sediment. Okay. This is evidence of a turbidity region. So what really happens is the sediment over time accumulates on the seafloor. And whenever you have a stronger tidal current, it becomes suspended and you can measure it as a suspension. These turbidity regions in general are important nutrient sources for the um, ecology, for the, for the food chains and estuaries, okay, because of the organic uh, particulate matter. Okay, that's a very important uh, message, okay. All right, so this is one example. Let's see whether I have another example. This is another example. In the Tama River estuary on the south coast of England, the structure of this estuary is shown here on the, on the right side. You can see a top view of the structure. You can see the, uh, the, the, the main estuary channel, and there are numbers, and these are the salinity levels. 30, 25, 20, you, got, you can see some sub-estuaries, which, which are the side arms of the estuary, okay, 20, 15, and then you have between the region where you have between 10 and 5, it's quite upstream in this estuary, and we're talking about maybe 20 kilometers upstream at a distance from the ocean, there is between 5 and 10 salinities. We have now observations over a period of 12 hours, which is just um, over a tidal cycle. And here are three uh, pieces of information. We have the salinity at that location, okay, from the surface to the bottom. And you might be a little bit surprised now here, but you can see the, the surface level. You have the high tide and the low tide. Okay, you have quite a tidal range at that location of more than three meters. And you can see that with the low tide, you have the fresh water coming into your location. And with the incoming tide, you get the higher salinity water coming into your region. Okay, and during the strongest tidal flows, you get the suspended matter signal that you get. Um, okay. The suspended in the water column, okay, in again, what's the unit here in kilograms per cubic meter? And so, and again, this is the signature of enhanced flows eroding sediment from the seafloor. But this only happens in within that area where you, where you have the, um, the accumulation, okay, accumulation, the turbidity region. All right, and you get relatively high current speeds here, exceeding 60 centimeters per second, 80 centimeters per second, and so on. Okay, so that, that's one example of a, of a turbidity region. Let's see whether I have another one. No, I don't have another example. So that's the two examples. But it's in all positive estuaries. You have that problem. Sediment accumulates over time, and it has to be often dredged away. Okay, so we don't have that problem here in the inverse estuaries in South Australia. 